Hopefully you're having a great day and everything is wonderful. But I want to share some experiences with you that I had with money. And I'm going to talk about why I kept having the same money problems over and over and over again until I learned something, right? And some of you may be in the same situation. You always find yourself with these money problems and things that's going wrong, these issues with money and money this, and you can't do this, you can't do that. Living paycheck to paycheck always seem to have these money problems. Well, this is the issue, and I'm going to dig into it a little bit. But the issue, guys, is that money is not money cannot save you. Money can definitely not save you from you. So let's have the let's have this conversation, guys. As you come in, let me know what city you're coming from, what state, what country you're in. And shout out to all of you guys out here in Nashville, driving home to Collierville, Tennessee. Good to have you here, Jennifer. Glad that you checked in with us. And I hope you have a safe day drive. Okay. Be safe out there on those roads. Um, but let me know where you're coming in from guys. And we'll have this conversation. I won't be long before you today because, uh, you know, I just want to make it a fairly quick video, but I want to explain this concept to you. It's a concept that many people struggle with and is the reason why people always seem to repeat the same problems over and over again when it comes to money. And you can't listen. I did a search for this issue and you on, on YouTube and you really don't find many people talking about this. Right. When people talk about money problems and things like that, you don't hear this conversation very often, but you probably should hear it more because it'll help. It'll help. And it'll, it'll bless a lot of people. But let's see. Guys. Oh, Romania is here. Murray, this is good to, hit. Good to see you here. Steve from east of Dallas, East Texas. Illinois is checking in. Uh, good to have you, BZ. Uh, what's up, Anthony? Uh, New Haven, Connecticut's in the house. Dr. Anika. Uh, let's see here. We got Florida in here. We got Indiana. Indiana, man, if you, you, you said you're 17, you're young, you need to be absorbing what I'm going to talk to you about today. If you can get this in your spirit, your money situation will be very, very, will be way better off in the future. Philly suburbs is here. South Caca, South Carolina, no South Cali, Southern California, almost said South Cacalaki's in here. Okay, Kentucky is here. Uh, let's see here, Larry. No, that wasn't it, Larry. Your money can't save you, Steve. Born and raised in Tyler, Texas. Let's see who's your state is here. Indiana's here. Good to have you. Croatia, checking in from way over in Croatia. Glad to have you here. Thank you so much for spending time over here with me. But this is it, guys. This is the reason. This is what happened with me. <clears throat> and some of you will identify with this, I'm sure. But I kept having the same money problems over and over and over because I thought money was the problem. I thought money was the problem. And I was, and I didn't have any money for a long time, guys. Okay. I was poor way longer than I've had money. But back then, and this was kind of my, my poor mentality. It was kind of a um, what do you call it? Not not a not a lot, but uh uh my limited beliefs with money was that I thought money was the answer to really all of my problems, right? I thought, I thought more money is what's going to answer and solve all of my problems. I thought money was the issue. If I just could have a little more money, if I could just increase my income. Some of you, you're at that point right now. You're 35 years old. You're trying to figure out how can I just increase my income? How can I just make more money? What do I have to do? You know, you could be fighting somebody at the job for a $2,000 raise, right? You go from $45,000 a year to $48,000 a year, and you think that's all you need to do to solve your money problems. This is what I thought. I was in that same exact situation. This is why I know that mentality very well. You look at the pay scale of the job and you say, wow, 
I'm making $47,000 a year, but man, if I could just hang in there, do this, do this, do this, impress this person, impress that person, and do this and do this extra stuff here, I can make $51,000 a year and all my problems will be solved. That ain't it. <laughs> that is not it. I'm here to tell you, if nobody else has ever told you, has never told you, I'm telling you today. I thought that if I only had more money, everything would be okay. I thought I needed to have more cash, make more money. This is what I didn't understand. Thank you for checking in. Anthony, good to have you here. Thank you for that super duper. Uh, Edmonton is in the house. Long, got long, strong island, right? Public enemy. Lakewood, Washington's in here. Chicago's in the house. Good to have you. Uh, yeah, you're welcome. I'm going to teach you this. I'm going to teach you this. So listen to this closely. What I did not understand about money. Oh, by the way, guys, I, I, I skipped it. Smash the like button for me. If you're in here right now, we ought to have a bunch of likes in there. So hit that like button. Share this link. If you have a friend or a child or a nephew, niece, a, a mother, anybody who you think could use a solid word about money, please share this link with them, okay? Because this is... I don't know where else, I don't know anybody else on the on the internet really talking about this particular topic. But um please share it and smash the like button and check out my Mint Mobile down low. Check out Mint Mobile. If you're looking for a good solid um premium wireless service, Mint Mobile is is, is it. I recommend them highly. Now, this is what I didn't understand. Okay. I'm gonna dig a little deeper here. I'm gonna go a little deeper, guys. Bear with me. Got a new phone that I'm actually recording on. So somebody says self-control is most people's problem that kept them from succeeding. That, that's a good point. Boynton Beach is here. Good to have you. Grayman, what's up? What I didn't understand was that most money problems don't have anything to do with money. Right? Let me say it differently. Most of your problems that you think are money problems, they appear to be money problems on the surface. Those aren't money problems. They're not really money problems. We try to solve problems with money. That's where we make our mistake because there's things that you can't solve, problems that you can't solve. See, what looks like a money problem is not always a money problem. Most times it ain't got nothing to do with money. It's got money is the symptom. Money is the result. Money is the outcome. You don't have money at 45 years old, not just because you just don't have money. It's because you ain't done the things to get the money, right? Let me go a little deeper into that. I had to learn that money was a symptom of larger problems with me. See, I was 30 years old. I had a college degree. I was living in an apartment, 1990. I was driving a 1996 Honda Civic, green four-door stick shift, right? I was driving, this is what I purchased in 87 or 88. I'm just sorry, 97 or 98, I purchased it. And it was a 96. And I was 30 years old in the year 2000, had a 96 Honda Civic that I owed $15,000 on, maybe $10,000 on, something like that. I didn't have any money. I had a negative net worth. I didn't own any houses. I didn't own any. I had like 10 grand or something from my previous job or my job's uh, uh, retirement plan. I owed $25,000 in student loans. I had a negative net worth. I didn't have anything. But I had a college degree. Listen, I didn't have money, but me not having money was not a money issue. It was a me issue right? It was a me problem why I didn't have money at 30 years old living in America, the, 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 the richest country in the world for the most part. Lots of problems here too. I understand that. But living in a society where I had the free will to choose what I want to do. I had the free will to make decisions about what I wanted to do. And I was 30 years old and broke. That wasn't a money problem, right? That was a problem with me and my choices and my decisions. See, I thought I needed more money, but I, what, what I really needed was a plan. 
What I really needed was discipline. What I really needed was better decisions, a commitment to being better with money. Money could not save me, but I thought it could save me. And a lot of people think that money, more money, is what's going to be able to save them from having all these money problems, right? When you have no money and you have no money and then five years later you have no money and then 10 years later you still don't have money, the reason is because you think money is your problem. So because you don't have more money, it gives you the idea that money is the problem. You go five years with no money, 10 years, no money, 15 years, no money. Now, all of a sudden, you're 46 years old, 47 years old. You haven't had no money since you was 25 years old for the last 20, 30 years. You ain't had no money. And you're thinking that it's money. This is why you can't solve the issue because you're trying to solve it or you think it's going to be solved with more money. It's not about the money, right? Money can't. Okay. If you look in the description box below, guys, on YouTube, here the description box, you'll see something called the 24 Laws of Money. It's a free ebook from me to you. If you look at the 19th law of these 24 laws of money that uh, in the book that I in the free ebook that I wrote that's in the description box, you'll see that the 19th law of money is that money can't solve issues that exist because of free will. Think about that for a second. See, if, if, if you have free will to make decisions and choices, then I can't throw more money on top of your situation to help you. I might be able to do it temporarily, right? If you live in a society or country where you have the right to exercise your free will and you're grown and poor, money is not the problem. You being poor or broke or stuck living paycheck to paycheck is not about the money. Money's not going to solve your problems. Money might, like I said, provide you with a temporary, a temporary quick solution. Right? Oh, bread is three dollars. I need three dollars and fifty cents to get bread. Let me get borrow fifty cents. Okay, you solved a quick problem. Right? It's a temporary quick problem. But money's not the issue. Where there's free will. You are free to choose what you're going to do. You are free to make those decisions that that end up affecting your money. Money is an it money is a um, byproduct of a larger issue. The problem is we don't never tr we rarely try to attack the broader issue, the bigger issue. We always focus on attacking the money because if I 95% of everybody I talk to, the first thing they tell me is, I need to increase my income. I need to make more money. I got to make more money. I got to make more money. Listen, if you got to make more money, then you have to do some things that have nothing to do with money to make more money. You have to address the issues, the real issues, and then the outcomes of addressing those real issues are going to affect your money. Right? I hope that makes sense. What I'm saying, let me look back at the chat, guys. Uh, let's see here. Okay, self-discipline problems. Yep. Appreciate you being here, Soraya. I think I got that name right. Appreciate it, Anthony. Self-control is big. KC Fusion, you're right. You are right. From Canada, good to have you here. Nice man. Nice man. Money can't change your thinking. Money can't change your habits. True. Self-discipline. The goal orientation are key success. Yes. Most people have limited self-belief. Absolutely. Limited self-belief is huge. You're right. Appreciate that comment. So again, money won't erase your problems or your money can't affect your lack of discipline. I think somebody said it. Money's not going to erase um, the problem of your lack of ambition, right? If you don't have ambition, and you don't want more out of life, money ain't gonna change that. I can give you, I can give you five thousand dollars tomorrow. You're still gonna have, you're still gonna lack ambition. You're still gonna lack commitment. You're still gonna lack discipline. Yeah, I helped you with five grand tomorrow, but guess what? In a year, are you still gonna have that five grand? Probably not, because you didn't change the behaviors that led to you not having money in the first place. See, people think money. Okay, I always get this 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 blowback or this pushback. 
when I tell people that money doesn't solve the issues of poverty in a free society. Money doesn't solve the issues of poverty. And the reason money doesn't solve the issue of poverty in a free society is because people are free to choose. People have their own free will. And if you have your own free will, I can give you a bunch of money. It's going to be gone in six months. It's going to be gone in two years because you have other issues that don't have anything to do with the money that people don't address. They think, okay, universal, what's it called, guys? You, What is it? Universal living income, universal income, where you give everybody money every month. You give everybody money every month. Listen, poverty, poverty don't change because people have a free will to do what they want to do, to make their own decisions, right? Money won't erase your problems with apathy, right? Or money won't eradicate the problems that are rooted in your behaviors, what I'm saying is that money might feed you today, guys, but you need more than money to have a continuous flow of food, right? I can go, I can, I can take you down. Listen, as much as I give to and help out people that are less fortunate, like a homeless person, right? If you if you give money to a homeless person, that's cool, nothing wrong with it. You're supposed to give, and I'm all about giving. But if we drop $750 in the lap of a homeless person. That money is only going to help that person eat for about a month. But at some point, that person is going to need more money because they never addressed the issue that led to the homelessness in the first place. Right? Same concept with me and you. I had to learn this. This is what kept me struggling with money constantly. Because, it, because it's not just about me handing you something. You have free will. You know, if you're watching this and you're 30 years old, you got to stop chasing the money and start chasing the thinking and the behaviors that are leading to you not having any money. Start chasing the education, the certifications, uh, whatever it may be, right? Your habits, your discipline, your, okay, you want to change and make more money, Chase those things. Don't chase just the money because the money is not it. The money's not it, okay? What is? What about your value to the marketplace? Chase being more valuable. Don't chase money because money is not the issue. 99 times out of 100. Do, do budgets. Do worksheets. Do a, a net worth statement. Read more books. Learn more. Study. Research. Start changing the input. That's what's going to change the output. Not me handing you $1,000, not you getting a raise on the job. That's not going to solve all your money problems. It's not going to do it. I thought it would. I was wrong. Right? I don't, and I know some of you might be saying, well, I'm not naturally wired to do this, or I'm not naturally wired to uh, have this. or have. Look, rewire your thoughts. That's all a part of free will. That's all a part of being able to make decisions and make choices in life. Rewire how you think. Rewire your attitude. Rewire your belief system. Change it. Right? I always I cringe when people say, you're not the same person you were back then. Listen, you're not supposed to be the same person you were back then. You're supposed to change and mature and grow. So why not change and mature and grow? Kick the process off. Don't wait for you to naturally change. Initiate the change in you that's going to change your money, your money outcomes, right? For me, it wasn't the money. And I'm sitting here looking at my, pulling up something, seeing how long. Okay, so that's big, guys. That's big. I had to learn that money was just a tool, right? It wasn't the main tool, wasn't the most important tool, wasn't the biggest tool, wasn't the, the only tool I needed. It, no, money is one tool. There's a whole bunch of other things you need that are even more important to lead to your long-term success with money than just money, right? It's like the old saying, right? The old saying was what? Uh, you can teach a person to fish, but you, you know, but you know, you, that, that's not enough. You can lead a horse to water. That ain't enough because people have free will. 
I, this is what I had to learn, right? And I had to learn it. It wasn't taught to me. It's not going to be taught to you in the schools, your parents. Nobody's going to teach it to you. Tony Robbins ain't going to teach it to you. You've got to get it in your spirit. You can hear it all you want, but you've got free will. If you don't take action, doesn't matter. Doesn't mean anything, right? I had to realize that it was me, my responsibilities, my responsibility for my actions and my inactions, right? Listen, people always forget about the second part. Oh, you're, you're personally responsible for your actions, but you're also personally responsible for your inactions, the things that you don't do, the things that you decide not to do, the things that you make a choice to not do, you're also responsible for that, right? What you choose to do and what you decide not to do when you know to do the right thing, right? If you say, you know what? I got these bills due, but I'm going to go ahead and go on vacation. Them bills going to be here when I get back. I'm going to go ahead and kick it on vacation. I don't know how I'm going to pay these bills. I'm going to go have fun over in Greece, Italy, uh, Abidaba, or uh, you name it. I'm going to go have fun. Listen, you're responsible for your behavior. What you do and what you decided not to do, it's on you, right? That's the biggest piece about money that is hard to really explain to people. But having to come to the, the conclusion that money is not what's going to save you from your poor decisions. Money is not what's going to save you from your bad choices, your inability to be disciplined. Money don't save you from any of that. You may think it does, may feel like it will. It won't. Been there, done that. Money problems are typically a result of much deeper problems that most people never address. And so they stay poor or they keep doing the wrong things. They always mess up with money because they're not addressing the root problem. Right? If you have no ambition, me giving you a thousand bucks in your lap today, that may pump you up for a minute, but it ain't going to change the fact that you ain't got no ambition. Right? Right? That's why I always say, if you have no discipline with $30,000 a year and you can't manage that properly, you're not going to be able to manage $300,000 a year. I don't care what people think or say or they joke about, ha ha, let me try. No, look, it doesn't matter. You've got to start. You've got to be able to handle what you can handle first, what you got first. Money will not save you. Man, it's Sunday and I feel like I'm preaching. Let me stop that. Okay, it kind of, let's see. Uh, I know it's, it's, it's counterintuitive. What I'm saying is a little counterintuitive. We think on the surface, yeah, money, yeah, money, yeah, money, but we're not thinking deep enough. Got to go deeper with our thought process. Uh, let's see, Soraya, I got your name right. Fantastic. Like, I understand what you're saying, but how do we solve it? Here's how you solve it. That's a great question. I appreciate you asking that question. Thanks for grabbing your free ebook, Anthony. This is how you solve it. One, take responsibility over your money. Take responsibility. Me not realizing this whole thing that it was on me is what kept me coming back to these same money problems. I, I fixed it when I realized that it's not the money that's going to fix my problems. It's my own personal choices, my own decisions that I choose to make with my free will. When I understood that, it changed the types of decisions I was making. It changed my choices, right? It made me say, okay, I'm not being disciplined with money, but what can I do to solve it? Because when I take personal responsibility, I have power. And that power results in different decisions, different behaviors, which ultimately results in different outcomes, right? Right? So if, you, if you're 30 years old and you don't have any money and you feel like, I don't have, what can I do? What is your plan that you create to change your situation in five years? What's the plan? Is it written out? It should be written out on a piece of paper, spreadsheet, the background of your cell phone, whatever it may be. Write out your plan to get out of whatever situation you're going to get out of. Not to get out of it today, but to get out of it in a year, in three years right? It's a process. It's not a get rich quick thing. That's why get rich quick violates so many principles. And it usually doesn't work because it violates natural principles that are here on the earth, right? Natural principles. It's a process, right? 
It's not, I'm not the heir to JP Morgan. I'm not Jamie Dimon's cousin. Okay. So for 99.999% of us, it's a process. And how do we start to engage in the process? We have to start to engage, right? You don't sit back. The process ain't knocking on your door. You got to start engaging in the process because it's on you. First step, take full accountability, full responsibility for your money problems. Don't blame it on the money. Don't blame it on the president. Don't blame it on Congress. Don't blame it on all these outside things you have no control over. Blame it on the one person that you have the control over, and that's you. This is how you start to change it, right? It's why most lottery winners go broke because they haven't gone through the process to build and become the person who can handle the money, right? The response, all the stuff that I'm talking about, a lottery winner, winner don't have to do none of that. So they automatically get a bunch of money, and guess what? They automatically lose a bunch of money, a lot of them, right? But people don't attack the root. It's like, okay, here's another example. I'm giving you a bunch of examples. The person who wants to fix their credit, right? We all know the person who's trying to fix their credit. They got a 500 credit score from Experian. All of their FICO score is 500, and they want to fix their credit. So what do they do? They go to somebody to help them fix their credit when they should be going to somebody to help them fix their behaviors, right? They're out the, the, the way they think. That's the first thing to think if you got, the first thing to do if you got bad credit is not go to somebody to help you fix the credit, go to somebody to fix the way you think about money. And then ultimately that's gonna fix your credit ultimately, right, down the road. But people never address the underlying causes of money problems, the underlying causes of being in a bad position with money and living paycheck to paycheck, or the underlying causes of going bankrupt, right? There's a reason that chapter 13 bankruptcies are far, far less successful, and I'm talking way less successful than chapter seven bankruptcies, right? I mean, a chapter 13 bankruptcy requires a level of responsibility out of you. That's why 30, 40% of chapter 13 bankruptcies end up not working because people haven't addressed the problem while they got into bankruptcy issues in the first place. That's the root causes, right? Free will. That's all I'm saying, right? Somebody said uh, self-discipline and goals, goal orientation. I'm just reading the chat. Unwillingness to sacrifice. No doubt, old school. You're right. Pam, Pamela said it's deeper than free will. Money is not the issue. Talk to me, Pam. Let's see. Somebody said learning about stacking discounts. Example, buy discounted retailer gift card and then use a cash back. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, I've heard all that. I'm not into it, so I can't really speak much on it. Yep. I agree with you, Sarai. It kind of doesn't make sense. I think I read that before. Let's see here. Okay, I'm getting I'm getting closer. I'm scrolling through. Real talk, worthy, values, principles, morality. Uh, yeah, I was wrong. Chase knowledge, not money. Speaking the truth, no doubt. Appreciate you, smart girl in uh, New York City, laughing at Tony Robbins. Let's see here. Do you think you could make a video about resources we can utilize and learn more about financial literacy and discipline? Yes, I could make that video. That's a good good, uh, good idea. I think I got that written down already, really, actually. Uh, let's see. I don't want to be 30 and broke. I'm with you. Change these. To, do what I'm telling you to do. 26 years old, Johnny said. Okay, so explain when my when twin started their own business. Boom, that's good. Excellent. Some people are ready, right? I'm in my, what? what, what? Big fan from South Korea. Good to have you here. I'm just reading some of the chats here. Never having kids. Okay, let's see. I would need a, a a wife first. Okay. Going through bankruptcy will teach you a lot. Absolutely. Let's see. Jamaica's in the house. Tulsa's in the house. Good to have you, Curtis. Uh, let's see here. Somebody said, how do I remain consistent on YouTube? I just, just keep going. 
But this is something that's really big, guys. And I wasn't able to change. Don't fall. Don't think that you, you have to make a bunch of decisions with money in order to learn with money. OK, you can look at other people make decisions and make you know choices and, and tell you things to make sure you avoid them. All right. You don't don't be the person that always has to touch the hot stove to know that it's hot. All right. But this is for me. I'm this is therapeutic. Right. Because this is why I kept having money problems and didn't understand how to get off of this this uh, this hamster wheel of constantly having these money problems was just that I had to come to the realization that more money was not the savior for me in terms of my money problems. It wasn't about the more money. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. There are some people who, when they get a windfall of money, they know what to do and they know how to handle it properly and so forth. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that for most people, it's not the money, it's the behaviors. It's not the money when you have free will. I can't pay you and give you a whole bunch of more money to make you more successful with money. There's some changes that need to pay, take place within you. Right? And if you don't make those changes, you're going to find yourself back in the same situation a year later, three years later, 10 years later. And ultimately, you're 26 right now, Johnny, but ultimately, you're going to be 46 having the same money problems over and over if you don't change some things, the root problems, not just going to look for the more money, more money. Give me more income. You listen, you look on YouTube, the videos on YouTube that talk about having making more money and increasing your income. Those videos get millions of views. The videos talking about change the way you think. They don't get as many views, right? Because everybody thinks it's income. Everybody thinks I need a side hustle to make more money so I can pay. It's not really, that's not really it, guys. But because everybody thinks that's it, those are the videos that are going to get a million views, right? My highest view uh, video on YouTube was a video talking about Streams of income, increasing your streams of income. There's nothing wrong with that, right? But I'm saying don't forget about the root cause. The root cause, most money issues are not money issues. Most. Most money issues, it's more, it's more to it than just money. It really is, guys. Oh, thank you. Good, good, good. Um, Amanika. Amanika, appreciate that. Good. I'm glad that was able to help you out, whatever I said or did. Uh, yes, Curtis, absolutely. A lot of bad decisions, right? Somebody says, when did you start investing in index fund? What was your first index fund? Well, my first index, just to answer that question, kind of off topic, but I'll answer it, right? My first index fund was really through my job, right? Because my job... I work for the federal government and the federal government has a TSP plan. In the TSP, those are basically like index funds. But the index fund that I had to save up to get because there's a minimum fee was VTSAX at Vanguard. That, that index fund that has a minimum of 3000 right now, I had to save up to get at some point. So that was really my first one. All right, let's see here. No, hey, Miss Reynolds, you're late, but you didn't miss nothing. You missed a lot. Rewind back to the beginning and you can see it from the beginning. We dropped some jewels because of the fact that I had some problems. And this is how I fought myself out of the problems with taking the responsibility, looking in the mirror. Don't forget this, guys. If you don't remember anything else I say on this video, remember this one thing. Personal responsibility is your superpower. Personal responsibility is your superpower with your money. It's your superpower. When I say with your money, I don't mean just money, money, money. I mean with your ability to build wealth. It's your superpower that's going to help you build wealth. If you get into the mind frame that it's not your responsibility, it's not you, it's it's not on you, it's the system, it's capitalism, it's inflation. If you get into that mind frame, you lose. You've already lost. If you're 25 years old watching this 
and you are in the mind frame that the system is what's keeping you down and keeping your money low, you've lost and you will ultimately be a loser in the money game. I just tell it to you exactly like it is. No frills, no thrills, point blank. But if you believe and understand at a young age, as young as possible, that your personal finances is 100% about your responsibility. Don't get me wrong. My head is not buried in the sand. I know inflation exists. I know there's policies and laws in the books that exist. But if you get in your head that those policies and laws is what's keeping you down, you're going to end up always being a loser in terms of money. But if you get in your head that your personal responsibilities is 100% your responsibility, 100% your accountability, you're well on your way. That is the first step to becoming and building wealth. First step, because it's your superpower, right? It's your superpower. Because yeah, and here's the kicker. If you're 45 years old, 55 years old, and you made a bunch of mistakes with money in the past, you can get some of this superpower too. But you got to first say, look, I messed up. I made mistakes. I did. That's why on this on this channel, I always talk about my mistakes because I messed up and made bad decisions with money. And in order to me, in order to make it turn my superpower, in order to turn my failures into a superpower, I have to take those failures and say, "What? It was my my fault. I got to take responsibility over my bag, my fault." Right? And I say my bag. Because in 1988, 1986, we were saying my bag and not my bad. And somehow it got on TV and became my bad. But back in the day when we first started saying it was my bag, my fault. So it's my fault. If you take that responsibility and say it's my fault, then guess what? Here's why it's your superpower. Because now you have the ability to change it. But if you put it on somebody else, you gave them your powers. If you put it on capitalism and inflation, then guess who has the power to fix your situation? Capitalism and inflation. And as long as inflation is bad and capitalism exists, you ain't doing, you ain't gonna win. If you give them the power, this is why it's a superpower. Because not only did you make mistakes, but now you have the ability to change it, to fix it, to correct it. But as long as you give somebody else the power to correct it, you're gonna be weak powerless, right? That's why personal responsibility with your personal finances is your superpower. It gives you the ability to say, I made a mistake and gives you the ability to say, I'm going to fix it. If you get that in your spirit, in your 20s, in your 30s, your 40s and 50s, you won't be living the same when it comes to your money in your 40s and 50s. Listen, when I tell you this, if you want to stop making the same, having the same problems over and over and over with money, you have to, you have to understand money is not the problem. You're the problem. The fact that you have free will and you can go over and get that free will and you can do what you want. You can squander it. You can make the best of it. You can be apathetic. You can have no discipline. You can have a whole lot of commitment. You can be focused. You cannot be focused. It's all on you. Somebody said, how do I get my superpowered 58? Jennifer, you're not too old, Jennifer. I don't want to hear that excuse. You're not too old, Jennifer. You're not. Because if you tell yourself you're too old, you just gave your, you just gave your superpower to age. You just gave it over to age and say, you know what? I'm too old. I can't do this. I can't do that. Don't do that. You can make changes. And as long as you're breathing and blinking, you can make some changes. You can definitely make changes. Listen, you might be around when you're 78. You're 58 now. You, it's, chances are you're going to be around when you're 78. And if you're around when you're 78, then guess who the best person to take care of the 78-year-old Jennifer is? It's the 58-year-old Jennifer. Get going. Get started. Right? Somebody said, I've made so many mistakes in life. I couldn't read it all. It became my responsibility to change myself and then teach those lessons to my son. Absolutely. 
Don't buy depreciating assets. Maybe get around, get around someone who can help you, some good habits of a mentor. Hey, I can be your mentor. If you're watching this video, hey, check out my videos. Give me a shout. Join the channel. Sign up for a one-on-one -on -one in the description box. Let's talk, right? Now, if I'm your mentor or if I'm helping you, or I'm coaching you, be ready to be, be told the truth. Be ready to be told the absolute truth because I'm going to put it right on you. We're going to have a conversation and we're going to talk about how you can change it because it's all about belief, right? We're going to talk about how you can make some changes, do this differently, do that differently. But at the end of the day, I can only walk you to the water, right? You got to drink on your own, right? I can only give you the information. You got to, and this is what, this is where a lot of people get hurt. They listen to the videos, they get the motivation, they get hyped up for a minute, and then Monday comes around. And five o'clock comes around. They get tired after work and they want to go back to old habits. You got to go to new habits. If you want to change your personal financial situation, you got to go to new disciplines, new commitments, new things after work, right? You can't just do what you did. Go home, go to work, come home, go to work, come home, watch TV, go to work, come home, party, go to work, come home, go to work, come home, drink a beer, go to work, come home, go to work, come home, watch Netflix. No, that can't be the routine if you want to change your situation. Right? It can't. Law of attraction. I've heard of that before, but not 100% sure what it is. Columbus, Ohio, Dominica, glad to have you. If you, if listen, smash the like button for me, guys. You got to hit the like button because this is a message. This is really a message I think a lot of people need to hear. A lot of folks, not just, uh, you know, the 25 year old, 35. I think a lot of people need to hear this information. Whether it's inspirational, whether it's motivational, I don't know what it is to you. Maybe it's encouraging. Maybe it's not encouraging. I don't know. But people need to be able to understand that money is a money is a result. Money is not a money is not the reason. Okay, the money you have is a result of what? It's the result of your thoughts, your behaviors, your decisions, your lack of decisions, your apathy, your discipline. If you're doing well with money right? It, uh, or the it's the lack of those things, right? That's what it is. If you don't have any money and you're 35 years old, it's not because you don't have any money. It's, it's because of what did you what did you do? What decision did you make at 21 that led you to not have money at 35? Right? Maybe it was because you decided not to get that law degree and instead go party and you never got the college degree that you went to school for and now you make $17 an hour and you're wondering why. It's not because it's not the money that was the problem. It's your decision to not do what you were going to do and had plans to do that's, that's the reason you're 35 years old making $17 an hour. Get to the root. Stop playing on the surface with the money. Get to the root of the money, right? The root of the problem, right? If a tree doesn't bear leaves, and I'm looking at a couple of trees, if a tree don't bear leaves, we can go throw a bunch of leaves, we can go uh, paperclip leaves to the tree. Still a dead tree. Them little leaves we paperclip going to fall off at some point because you ain't attacked the root. You got to feed the root and do something at the bottom in order to see the blossom, right? Listen, I appreciate it. I appreciate it so much. I appreciate it you guys being here. I'm not going to hold you. Short video, well, short for me, 40, 40 something minutes. But I just wanted to express this opinion, express this money thought to make you think a little bit different about your money situation if you're struggling. And listen, if you're not struggling and you're doing well with money, chalk that up to good decisions too. We know there's some fortune in everything that happens because we're always grateful uh, for the mercy and grace. We're always grateful for the, for the things that we've gotten and, and where we are. But understand, if you're doing well with money, you made some good decisions a while back with money. Because what you decide yesterday affects today. What you decide today is going to affect tomorrow. So I'm not going to hold you guys on here. I wanted to express this, express this. If you've got any value out of this, smash the like button and please feel free, drop me a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comment section below. And I appreciate you guys chiming in with your uh, thoughts in the chat. Miss B, Curtis Ball, Marius, RG, Soraya, Jonathan, Jennifer, 
Pamela Morrell. Good to have you, Pamela. I got an email. I got to get back with you on Pamela. Uh, Super Chat. Get out of here. Frank Ellis, I appreciate you. Law of Attraction is a book by Esther Hicks and Jerry Hicks. Uh, Miss V, thank you so much for the Super Chat. Great information, she said. Thank you so much for the Super Chat. I'm going to like it and heart it. I appreciate that, Miss V. Miss V checks in, I think, from the Upper Northwest. Thank you so much for being here. 100% on point, my brother, Jay Watson. Good to have you. Listen, share the video, like the video, drop a comment. Appreciate you guys being here. Enjoy your Sunday. The best person who's going to take care of the old you is the young you. Take good care of yourself and always, 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 always don't forget to take good care of other people. Until the next video, peace.